everyone! Welcome back to my channel! Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's video is going to be a nursing school video. So, if you guys want to see how I study this huge med surge book, and it's actually upside down. My med surge book. My med surge book. It's huge. If you guys want to see how I study, then just keep on watching. Before we get into the video, let me introduce myself. I'm Brittany. Thank you so much for tuning in. My channel is all about just my lifestyle. Right now, I'm a, I'm a nursing student, and for those of you that are in nursing school, you guys know that nursing school just kind of takes over your life a little bit. So I decided to make a few videos while I am on this student nurse journey. Um, be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already, and please let me know if you are a nursing student down below, what semester you're in, and what other videos you'd like for me to do. All right, let's get into so, this. This is the med search book that my school requires us to have. It's the, we just call it the Iggy because this is a really long last name. So this is what we do. Also for my last video, be sure to check it out. I did make a video on how I study for my nursing school exams and my midterms, my finals, quizzes, all that stuff. And I did get a lot of good feedback, so that's why I'm here today making this video. So um, if you've ever like had a med surge or taken a med surge class, you know they could be a little bit overwhelming. And this is one of the courses that a lot of people have a hard time with. And I think the reason why is because it's a lot. Med surge, you just, you're learning about all the acute you know diseases and even the chronic illnesses so it's just a lot of information you have to remember in a short period of time so um, I found a way to kind of guide my studying and that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about how I do that and um, kind of how to break down this med surge book without having to read every single word because that's impossible to retain I'm sorry I'm gonna be honest number one my first tip is understand the disease or uh, say your instructor is going over a disease process, understand the pathophysiology of that disease. So for example, heart failure or congestive heart failure, there's different, you know, oh, that's my stomach. There's interchangeable names for this um, disease. So I'm gonna call it heart failure. But if you know heart, what heart failure is, I've had several heart failure patients as a nursing student. And I've learned over time too, just watching these patients and reading my textbook, that this is inadequate cardiac output. So in essence, the body, the heart is not pumping out enough blood to maintain tissue perfusion. Um, you also want to understand, so for example, heart failure, you want to know the pathophysiology. What is that? What is heart failure? What's going on in the body? So you want to understand that and you also want to know what's going on in the body. Then you also want to know the causes. So what causes that particular disease? At, like in heart failure, um, I wrote down a few notes. So <laughs> what causes that? Um, usually it's when the heart muscles become damaged or stiff. How does that happen? obviously like hypertension, um, if you have a history of myocardial infarctions or a history of heart attacks, um, if you have faulty heart valve. So um, once we do, once you wanna know, understand that disease. Once you have that down, you're getting in the right track. Next thing you wanna understand is know the signs and symptoms of the disease. And you wanna know that because you wanna understand, as soon as you look at your patient and you start to see signs and symptoms, you want to start thinking in your head what it could possibly be. Nurses are, we're like little detectives. So if we see something, we need to start thinking, okay, what's the next process? That is what nursing school tries to teach you. It tries to teach you critical thinking. It tries to teach you to be two steps ahead of everybody else because that's your patient. You need to know what's going on. Okay, so then um, next thing you want to understand, you want to identify your priority assessments. And what I mean by priority assessments is say this patient is a heart failure patient and they're, you know, they're displaying, you know, pulmonary congestion, they're displaying um, shortness of breath, they're tachycardia, things like that. We're already thinking left-sided heart failure and that means that once it's left-sided heart failure, um, you start seeing more pulmonary congestion. You start seeing some lung problem assessment. So if your patient is displaying, you know, shortness of breath, you're gonna know that you're gonna assess the lungs, you're gonna assess 
you know, all that. Their blood pressure, their pulse, their SPO2. Are they getting tissue perfusion? That's really important. So you want to know your priority assessment. So you know, you're going to assess the lungs. You know that you're going to assess cardiac. Um, you know that you're going to assess um, their neuro because when people start getting um, hypoxia or hypoxemia, they start to display confusion because there's not enough oxygen going to their brain. If I priority assessments, and I say priority because you need to understand in nursing school that everything is priority. You have to do a million things, but you have to know how to prioritize and what's important. So you want to um, think ABCs, so airway, breathing, circulation, and in some cases it's circulation, airway, breathing, just really depends on the situation. And you also wanna think Maslow's hierarchy of need. Um, I can put like a little image of that somewhere in here, but it pretty much tells you what is needed to for the human body to survive. You start thinking of your priority assessments, you start thinking of your priority diagnosis. And this is a book that I like to take, and um, it was provided in, my school's you know bundle for the books I used I use this for nurse the nurse's pocket guide and this pretty much um, helps you get nursing diagnoses priorities interventions and rationales but every patient is kind of unique so this will help you as far as um, your nursing diagnosis because nursing diagnosis and medical diagnosis are two different things you'll learn that once you get into nursing school or you probably are so this is a heart failure on this book and ooh, this is really heavy so for example this is care of patients with cardiac problems and it'll tell you here um this is really a lot to read so the way i like to break it up is like i just said um heart failure you want to know what it is you want to look at okay let's see there's different types so you want to know the different types and it'll give you signs and symptoms. For example, signs and symptoms, there's boxes. So this one has your left-sided heart failure, um, signs and symptoms, and then your right-sided. So you can look at that chart and it tells you exactly what you're looking for. You don't have to go and read all this other fluff as they call it. Right here, this is a list of your common causes. So I said you do wanna know your causes for a particular disease. So focus on finding all the all these little points in your text and then it also tells you your priority physical assessments so for um left-sided heart failure let's see la, 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 la. okay here we go so it says you want to um you want obviously assess their pulse and things like that so you don't have to read your entire textbook but um you want to go and just break down your textbook and go look for the things that you need to know. Don't look at everything, trust me. It's gonna give you want to prioritize your interventions. So nursing interventions are things you're going to do um, as a nurse within your scope of practice to help this patient get better, to help them be comfortable and to help them not be in pain. Do um, This includes independent and dependent. Again, this is all um, fundamentals stuff that you learn. So obviously independent and nursing interventions are things that you could do as a nurse on your own. So you can um, take the vitals. You can, I mean, most facilities, some facilities allow you to just put oxygen on the patient if they're having shortness of breath. So that's um, some, some facilities require a doctor's order. It's all very, very different. So you're gonna wanna learn this when you're a new nurse, what your facility allows you to do without a doctor's order. Um, so that includes independent, independent, yeah. So always um, prioritize your nursing interventions. And my book is like tearing apart. Okay, so uh, where am I at? Oh, here we go. So if you guys can see here, it says improving cardiac output, but it has this little box up here. Um, provide the necessary amount of oxygen to maintain oxygen saturation of 90% or greater. So that's gonna be one of your priority interventions. If a patient is displaying shortness of breath, First thing you're gonna wanna do, obviously after vital signs, you know, washing your hands, all that good stuff, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that the patient is maintaining enough oxygen. So you're going to put that patient on oxygen. So this book kind of breaks it down, like it will tell you like important interventions and the boxes are gonna be very important. Those are gonna be your friends. Always take a look at the boxes because they always give you a lot of what you need in a small box. So now when I say nursing interventions, this can mean like, turning a patient every two hours, um, starting an IV, or administering um, administering medication. So that's what I mean when I say nursing intervention. So always think of like, know your disease process, know your signs and symptoms, identify your priority assessments, 
okay? Once you do your assessments, that gives you an idea on um, how to prioritize your interventions. Um, next, you want to already start thinking, once you already know your disease process, your interventions and all that, you should already start thinking of the labs and diagnostics that the patient may be receiving or that the doctor will put orders for. Possible labs and one of these that will probably be on NCLEX and your teacher will ask you. One of the best labs to um, that a patient will undergo is a BNP. B-N, N as in Nate, P. Um, labs and diagnostics, of course, BNP, CBC, the typical. For sure your electrolyte imbalance because you, as soon as you have a heart failure patient and they start having um, electrolyte imbalances, you can easily have a dehydrated patient and then it's, it just gets much worse. It gets very complicated. You want to start kind of thinking ahead of the game and start thinking, okay, what possible labs may I see? So um, you're going to want to go in your textbook and look up under labs and just write them down. When it comes to labs and diagnostics, this is the book that I really like to use. This one is the Mosby's Diagnostics and Lab Test Reference and it really goes into detail. So if you're just learning about a disease process and what labs you may see, you definitely want to um, look up the lab. Okay, um, know your possible medication. So, so you're gonna wanna know the medication, you're gonna wanna know how the medication works, why the patient is taking this medication, side effects and any um, teaching. Cause some, some heart failure medications, uh, a patient shouldn't be, you know, on a certain diet and things like that. You're gonna wanna teach the patient to monitor for any adverse side effects or any adverse effects of the medication that require the doctor's attention. So you can look in your book, it always has a part that has drugs that will be given to the patient with this disease. So definitely write those down and know them. And that is where your drug guide comes in. I don't have it, I don't know where it's at. Um, I think it's somewhere in my backpack, but your drug guide is gonna be your best friend in clinical. So always have that with you. Okay, and then last thing you want to really understand as well is patient teaching. Cause as nurses, you do a lot of patient teaching. So you're gonna to wanna to teach the patient about any follow-up appointments. You're gonna to wanna to know any signs or symptoms, teach them about signs or symptoms that are gonna require the doctor's attention. Um, you're also gonna to want to um, teach them about medications. This is a big one. You're gonna to wanna to teach the patient about medications. Um, you're the one that's going to be, you know, instructing them on how to, if a patient, a diabetic patient, you know, if they're newly diagnosed, you're gonna to wanna to teach them how to monitor their blood sugar, how often, signs and symptoms, things like that. So you're also going to want to give family teaching because sometimes the family like if you're a pediat going into pediatrics you're not going to be teaching you know a five-year-old how to take care of themselves you're going to want to teach the family how to take care of their child and that is where um patient teaching okay, guys so i'm going to show you guys really quickly um this little this is <laughs> please excuse this this is really kind of messy but i'm going to show you guys kind of what this looks like so this is um from heart failure, I didn't write the medications because I didn't have time, but pretty much this is heart failure. So I told you guys, understand the disease, a little uh, formula you're gonna wanna know. So you're gonna wanna know heart failure, know what it is. So this is kind of what it looks like. The types, and then um, there's left and right sided, and then causes of heart failure. So I have a whole thing here. And then assessments and findings that you may see. So you're gonna wanna do respiratory assessment, cardiac, level of consciousness, or you could do neuro. Um, and then you're gonna wanna also do psychosocial. So these are my little notes. Um, and then here we go, heart failure, labs and diagnostics. So I wrote all of them down, okay? And then um, nursing interventions. So these are all kind of like my top nursing interventions. I didn't finish this, but overall this is what I, this is how I study. So I put all of this on one sheet of paper and it's all from this heavy textbook. So anyway, I hope I gave you guys some helpful tidbits about how to study your med search book. Um, Honestly, this video already is long enough, but I can go on and on about how to study for med search, but I hope this helps in some way. And if it has, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, please comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.